Let's see whether this one is working. I think we've got a connection now. Good morning to those that are, are watching. If you can see us, if you can uh, hear us, then uh, please let us know. Uh, give us a comment or a like, uh, just to know that actually uh, it is working and there is a connection there. That's always a blessing. It's good to, to be here in the room as well with uh, more people than we have had for a, for a little season. Don't panic. Everyone's still wearing a mask. Everyone's had their temperature taken. And uh, uh, everyone is at a safe social distance. And so, um, yeah, t today, if you are finding us for the first time, as we always like to say, uh, for these, <coughs> that um, we're also at ggechurch.co.uk. -E and you can also find uh, us at uh, YouTube, which is Greater Grace Evangelical Church channel. Subscribe to that and you can see more messages. Uh, it's good to see that Sean is joining us, so somebody can see us at least. Um, announcements for this week, which we're going to do again. I know that many of people who are in the room have already heard this, but for those that are online, um, this, is, uh, this might be new to them. Uh, just a reminder, 8 o'clock tonight... Um, but Friday is the big change. Friday, 11 o'clock, it's Good Friday. We will have a service here in the room for those that want to join with us. And it will also be live on Facebook as, as we have been doing. And then archived onto YouTube and onto our website. So that's uh, this coming Friday. And also on Friday, um, there's the opportunity for us to have a, a socially distanced, safe uh, singing outside uh, the, the home where Margaret Taylor lives, which is Stone House in Chester. If you'd like to join us for that, message us for the details. Two o'clock in the afternoon is when we plan to do that. So um, that'll be a blessing. So uh, Good Friday, 11 o'clock here and two o'clock in Chester. Uh, then Sunday... Uh, Easter Sunday, 11 o'clock here, and uh, turn up. There may be a few surprises. To find out what they are, you have to be here. So uh, that's for next Sunday, uh, God willing, um, if the Lord tarries, as we, we used to say. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so today we're going to get underway with uh, Luke 19. Palm Sunday today. So, uh, we're going to read from verse 35 of Luke 19. It says, And they brought him to Jesus and cast their garments upon the colt, and they set Jesus thereon. And as he went, they spread their clothes in the way. And when he was come nigh, even now at the descent of the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works that they had seen saying, Blessed be the King that cometh in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. And some of the Pharisees from among the multitude said unto him, Master, rebuke thy disciples. And he answered and said unto them, I tell you that if these should hold their peace, the stones would immediately cry out. And when Jesus was come near, he beheld the city and wept over it, saying, If thou hadst known, even thou at least in this thy day, the things which belong unto thy peace, but now they are hid from thine eyes. For the day shall come upon thee, 
that thine enemies shall cast a trench about thee and come past thee round and keep thee in on every side and shall lay even the, the even with the ground and thy children within thee and they shall not leave unto thee one stone upon another because thou knewest not the time of thy visitation. Mm. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for these words. We thank you for this truth. Thank you, Lord, for who you are. Thank you, Lord, for the Saviour. Thank you, Lord, that we can shout Hosanna today. Mm. We can shout Hallelujah today. Hallelujah. We can praise our God we can worship the Saviour. We can worship the coming King. And we, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for this, this story of Palm Sunday, this story of victory. Ready for the greater victory of Easter. Lord, we worship you today. Fill us with your spirit, Lord, we ask now. Anoint every thought, every utterance. Be with those that need your special touch today, Lord. We think of those that are shielding, those that are sick those that have needs be with each one Lord we pray protect each one come through for each situation and Lord we proclaim the greatness of the name of the living God of the Lord Jesus Christ we crave your Holy Spirit now Lord we ask that you'd fill us anoint us in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ Amen Wow. Palm Sunday, a special day, one of the, one of the uh, uh, days that we tend to mark as believers. You know, in one sense, we, we preach God's word. We preach the word that God is, has given us, whenever that is, whatever that is. But uh, there are a few times a year, Easter, Christmas, Palm Sunday, Pentecost, when maybe we focus, no, this is this, this is a this is a story we come back to. It's good for us to do that. It's good for us to have uh, landmarks that do not move, ancient landmarks. Proverbs uh, twenty three. You know, it's good for us to have certain things that are. I know you will say, well, Easter's a movable feast. Well, it is, but it comes, and it's there, whenever it is. It's like, well, it's still there. It's a reminder. And Palm Sunday, just another day in the church calendar. No, actually, it's more than that. You know, God thought this so vital that it is in every gospel. Uh, my wife was talking about it this morning, funnily enough, at the breakfast table. She said she read it in one of the gospels. And she said, oh, you know, which gospel is it? Which gospel is it? It's in all of them. It's in all of them. Every gospel. The triumphal entry. God thought this was so vital that he put it in every, every gospel. And I was thinking about this. Why is it so important? Yeah. It's fulfillment of prophecy. You know... Jesus could have snuck into Jerusalem. He could have just wormed his way in there. He could have gone in quietly. You know, that, that, you know the, 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 the fact that he had to be in Jerusalem. He could have gone in without any fuss. He could have gone in without any ceremony. But no, he didn't. He could have gone in unnoticed. He could have gone into a jeering mob. He could have gone in there to, uh, to, uh, to people who hated him. He could have gone in there to the Pharisees de uh, shouting abuse at him. He could have gone in there to, a, to a, a company of people who were not receptive. But he didn't. He went in there in victory. He went in there in triumph. Why is this? Was it just to add extra drama to the story? 
sometimes people emphasize that um, that oh well Jesus was there he was celebrated one week and then within within the week he's be, he's been taken to the cross and and people are crying out crucify him you know the world likes to make out well it's a dramatic fall from grace it's like the tabloid newspapers that put people up on a pedestal one week and then tear them down the next is this what's happening no it's not that that's not the point of it at all is it it's not just to add extra melodrama to the story of Easter no it is vital it's a fulfillment of prophecy as Martina just pointed out yeah it's, vi it's vital you look at Zechariah 9.9 9. rejoice greatly O daughter of Zion shout O daughter of Jerusalem behold thy king cometh unto thee he is just and having salvation lowly and riding upon an ass upon the colt the foal of an ass this is the prophecy Four hundred years beforehand. This is the prophecy. And you know what? Alarm bells should have been ringing for the Jewish nation. <coughs> Alarm bells, you know, for the priests, for the Pharisees, for all the leaders, for the scribes, for everybody who was talking about, even those that just had a vague knowledge, people who went to the synagogue each Sabbath and heard. The, 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 the words of prophecy read out people would have known they should have known they could have known that this was the fulfillment of this prophecy for the Jewish nation for the Messiah as foretold thinking about that and even the fact that there was this, this ass we didn't actually read the story of the ass but you know this ass that nobody had, had ridden on before and, it, and the fact that the, somebody comes out and says what are you doing with that and the answer is the Lord has need of it you know why, why, is, why is it there it's for emphasis it's pointing out that this is it this, just in case you missed it just in case you weren't aware this is the fulfilment of this prophecy Go about, you know, where does he talk? Where does he talk in the scripture about an ass's cult, the foal of an ass? Go and find it. Go and look and go and look what it says. The gate, the east gate of Jerusalem. Again, it's mentioned in the book of Ezekiel. It's fulfillment of prophecy. Messiah coming as just as it's foretold God making it very clear God emphasizing it and saying look this ass that hasn't been written on this young cult he's not coming in in warfare he's not coming on a camel he's not coming uh, in a big horse he's not coming on a tractor not coming in a tank not coming on a 2 CV no it's like it no it's it's this is it it's it's specific prophecy it's specific answer to prophecy this is it this is your Messiah this is your king coming daughter of Zion the daughters of Jerusalem come and notice this the Lord has need of it the Lord has need of you today that's it the Lord has need of you today as well Maybe you feel like a donkey. I know I do a lot of the time. But you know what? <laughs> the, the, Lord has, the Lord has need of us. It's a clear message. And also it's a clear message of victory. It's a clear message of good news. The gospel that is coming, it's going to be good news. Joy, rejoicing. You know, sing. That's what it says, isn't it?
Rejoice greatly, daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. This is the point. Make a noise. Make a noise in joy. Make a joyful noise to the Lord. This is it. You know, in one sense, you think about it, the story of Easter. It could be very doer. Good Friday, we will be focusing on the crucifixion. In one sense, we always focus on the crucifixion. On the cost that came with the price that was paid. The story of, of, of Easter could be very dour. It could be the grave. It could be the horror. It could be the tragedy. It could even be portrayed as a reluctant Jesus going in there. But no, it's not. It's a, it's a, a Jesus going into the city with joy. Going into the city with expectation. Going into the, the city and causing excitement. Causing a stir. This is the point. Not, uh, not somebody smuggled into the city. Not somebody going in facing a jeering crowd. But no, somebody going in in victory. Wow. Oh, you see, but it all went wrong, didn't it? You know, Jesus was very popular and then he said some things that people didn't like. And then, you know, the popularity, we went down in the popularity polls. No, that's not the case. That's not what it's about at all. No, it's God's perfect plan. It's God's perfect plan throughout history. Oh, it was trouble waiting to happen. Oh, you know, you get those disciples in there and you get all the, the religious authority. Oh, it's just, it's going gonna, it's gonna to cause trouble. And then you've got the Romans in there as well. It's going to be trouble. No, it's not about that. It's not circumstantial. This is the thing. Palm Sunday, Easter, it's not just, Jesus is not just the victim of circumstances. He's the fulfiller of God's perfect plan. He's the obedient servant. He's the one, he's the lamb to be offered. He's the one slain before the foundation of the earth. He's coming in, in obedience, but he's also coming in victory. Wow. Make a noise. Celebrate. Rejoice. Blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed be the king that cometh in the name of the Lord. This is a king coming. Not just anybody. Not just a celebrity. No, not just, a, not just a, an, another person. Not just another rabbi. Not just another teacher. This is the king coming. The king. And it says, peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Wow. Peace in heaven. You know, in uh, Revelation it speaks about there being war in heaven. But here, peace is proclaimed in heaven. Glory in the highest. This is the this is the Lord Jesus Christ coming. And I love it, you know, because we've often mentioned it in times past. But it's good to focus on it again. Some of the Pharisees from the multitude said unto him, Master, rebuke thy disciples. Well, I don't think we need to get too excited, do we? I don't think it's appropriate. I don't think it's right. I think you need to sort of tone things down. You know, it's like, don't don't come together and worship God because there's a pandemic. Oh, no, no, you better not do that. You know what? No. We worship God. Amen. We worship God despite things. We can worship in our own homes. Those of you that are watching at home, get up and, and, and jump off the sofa <laughs> and praise the Lord, you know, because we can worship at home. But we can also worship together. 
But the most important thing is that we worship our God and our Saviour because there is power in His name. He's the coming King. He's the fulfilment of prophecy. Let's get excited. Oh, rebuke your servant. Oh, don't cause a fuss. Don't make a noise. Don't make trouble. Wow. Have we ever get in trouble as a Christian? Have we ever been in trouble because of our faith? It happens. It will happen. You know, often we think that Christians have more trouble than anyone else. You know, and actually the Bible tells us that. <laughs> Promises us that we will have trouble. Those who will live godly in this present age will suffer tribulation. You know, this is the thing. We will, we will have conflicts. We will have difficulties. But you know what? The world will say, and not just the world, religion will say. Religious authorities will say, well, I don't know whether you whether you need to make all of this fuss. You know, we are priests too. We represent God as well here. You know, we're the priests from the temple. We're Pharisees. We're, we're, we're on the same side. We believe in the same God as you. But we're not going to make all of this fuss. We're not going to cause all of this trouble. We're not going to shout in the street. And you know what? It's true. Religious authority will do that. And even our own religious heart sometimes. I have to catch myself. Because you know what? I can become, I can become religious in my attitude rather than receiving the grace of God. I could live in works. I could live in my own religious attitude. I could live by the law if I'm not careful. But there is freedom in the Lord Jesus Christ. And you know what, this, tonight, this today, it's a story of freedom. It's a story of the Lord Jesus Christ coming in freedom and making free those that are prepared to, to worship him. And it's like, that is the story of the gospel. Jesus Christ crucified. But Jesus Christ risen from the dead. That actually what we can be free from guilt, free from anxiety. Free from our past. Free from oppression. Free from persecution. Even. You're going to say, well, you don't escape the persecution. No, but we can be free in the persecution. We can have a measure of freedom. Despite what people say to us. Despite what people do to us. We have, we have freedom. And I like this because... Jesus answered and said unto them, I tell you that if these should hold their peace, the stones would immediately cry out. Wow. I was just thinking about that. The stones. The stones would cry out. Wow. 1 Samuel 17, 40, remember that? David went to the brook and collected smooth stones from the book let's see it says, it says and he took his staff in his hand and chose him five smooth stones out of the brook and put them in a shepherd's bag which he had even in a scrip and his sling was in his hand and he drew near to the Philistine Wow, that was five smooth stones that were about to, one of them was about to go into the forehead of Goliath. Those smooth stones that were going to slay the enemy. What happened to those stones? Did they get thrown down? You say, well, it wasn't the same place. But who knows? One of those stones could have been kicked along. <laughs> One of those stones could have been the same stones that would have cried out. Those stones were a testimony in the, in the life of David. Uh, those stones were a victory. You know, maybe when, when Jesus says the stones would have cried out, 
Maybe that's what he's thinking about. Genesis 28, 18, remember that? Jacob, he takes the stone that was his pillow and he sets it up as a pillar when he see, has the vision of the angels de descending and ascending on the ladder. There's a stone there that was a testimony. There's a stone there that was a, 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 a marker to God's faithfulness and to what God had done. Remember Ebenezer, 1 Samuel uh, 7, 12. Samuel sets up a stone, Ebenezer, as a stone of witness, as a stone of help. And it's like, yes, that stone was there as a witness to what God had done for the nation of Israel, to God's faithfulness. A stone like that could cry out. A stone like that could be a testimony to what God was doing. Psalm 118, 22, the stone which the builders refused is become the headstone of the corner. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvellous in our eyes. Wow. Think about that for a minute. That stone that the builders had rejected in the building of the temple, there was a stone that was, that was cut out without hands. It was rejected for not fitting anywhere until the temple was finished. And then the very last piece, the very top stone, the capstone, the most prominent piece of, of stone in the whole building. They realized this last piece of stone that had been thrown aside because it was cut into a peculiar shape. Why would anybody cut it like that? It's ridiculous. It was a perfect fit. It was the perfect fit for the temple to be completed. The Lord Jesus Christ, the stone that the builders rejected, became the perfect fit to say, it is finished. His temple is complete. Think about that as well. First Peter 2. Verse 4 it says, to, to whom coming as unto living stones disallowed even of men, but chosen of God and precious, ye also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ wherefore also is contained in the scripture behold I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone elect precious and that he that believeth on him shall not be confounded unto you therefore which believe he is precious unto them which be disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed. The same is made the head of the corner. Wow. A stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. Even to them which, which stumble at the word, being disobedient whereunto also they were appointed wow this same verse quoted by the apostle Peter telling us that actually you know what we are lively stones we are part of God's building we are being built up into a spiritual house we're another brick in the wall we're uh, we're put we're put together God is making us, we, God is building his temple and he is the chief cornerstone. And yes, a stone of stumbling. Some people stumble at the idea of Jesus Christ. Some people stumble at the name of Jesus Christ. Some people are, get offended. 
a rock of offence. But to those that are living stones like ourselves, we know the name of Jesus. He's precious. And he's the, he's the one that holds it all together. Wow. This is our calling. To be lively stones. A useful witness. We cry out to Jesus. We cry out to our Saviour. Just as the rocks and the stones... In Jerusalem of that day, Jesus said, these stones would cry out. They didn't need to, because people were praising the Lord. People were praising the Lord Jesus Christ. They were lifting up his name. And for us, you know what? If we keep silent, God could do a miracle. He could make the stones cry out. But you know what? He doesn't need to. Why? Because we're a people who proclaims the Lord Jesus Christ. We're a people who goes out with a witness, with a testimony. We sing. We praise. We worship. We lift up the name of our Jesus, our Saviour, the Glorious One. And there's no need for God to open the mouth of a stone. Because he has his living people, his living stones on the earth as a testimony to the Lord Jesus Christ. Wow. You know the disciples there, they admired the, the stones in the temple. That's in chapter 21 of Luke. Now see what stones are these. And also it is, I think it's in Mark as well. Um, maybe uh, Mark 13. Uh, Matthew 24 the disciples they admired the stones of the temple Jesus said you know what there's not one stone that will be left upon another it's not the outward building it's not the outward building that is important it's not the the, the impressive oh look at, the, look at these things no it's the heart Religion builds up physical stones, doesn't it? There's a church across the road. God bless them. I did hear Grace preach there. Praise the Lord for that. Uh, one time I was there, they, they did preach on Grace. So God bless them for that. It's an old stone building. Huh? We don't have an old stone building. But in one sense, you know what? We don't need an old stone building. Because Jesus looked at the, at the temple in Jerusalem. And he wept over it. Because we know actually. Maybe we'll talk about a little bit about that tonight. But we know that actually. He had to cleanse that temple. It wasn't glorifying to God. And he, we know that actually the stones are not. There anymore. There isn't a stone laid upon another. But you know what? There are those that shout out, Hosanna in the highest. There are those that are a testimony to the living God. There are those that are a testimony as living stones. It's us. Why? Because we know our saviour we know the victorious saviour who came into the city God had to do it God had to do it in victory he had to show that this was a this was a victorious thing not a hiding away not a, not a, a controversial thing no this was a joy this was a blessing this was power speak more about that tonight maybe but uh, let's pray Heavenly Father we thank you Lord we worship you Lord that we have a saviour who is the God of victory 
who was able to go into Jerusalem in victory who was able actually to submit to the cross in victory and he was able to come out of the tomb in victory and Lord we thank you that you've given us hearts to sing you've given us mouths to open as a testimony you've given us the, the chance to rejoice as your people together Lord we thank you, we praise you and we worship you today because you are the completer of the work you are the finisher of our faith you are the one that says it is finished it is perfect it is done the work of the Lord Jesus Christ the work of God the Father to provide a sacrifice for sin to open a way for man to fellowship with the living God that sinful man could stand in the presence of a holy God because of sins forgiven because of the power of the Lord Jesus Christ thank you Lord we worship you today and we thank you Lord and we remember this this Palm Sunday not in a religious way not oh well we have to bring little little palm leaves woven into crosses and, and do a, a ceremony no we, we remember it because it is the power of the living God it is the truth it is the hope, not just for Israel, her king coming in victory, but the hope for the whole world, the Messiah, the Savior, Hosanna, save Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. The children cried out. The disciples cried out, save. Lord, we ask now, save. Save souls, save hearts, save lives. Save our nation, Lord, we pray. Touch this situation that we're in, in this pandemic, Lord, we pray, in your mercy. But moreover, we think of those struggling with their, with their identity. We think of those struggling with sin, with addiction. We think of those struggling with their, their, their mental health. And Lord, we know that actually the, we live in a corrupt world. We live in an evil world. We live in a world where religious authorities and, and secular authorities will tell us, don't do that, don't say that, don't speak out, don't celebrate, don't do anything like that, don't make a fuss. But we also live in a world where the Lord Jesus Christ gives us freedom, gives us release, gives us forgiveness of sin. Thank you, Lord. We worship you and we praise you, Lord. If there's anyone watching, anyone listening in, who has never trusted that in the Lord Jesus Christ as their Saviour, who doesn't know what it means to trust in the living God and to be released and to be made whole, Lord, we just pray that this would be the day that they say, Lord, come into my heart. Fill me with your Spirit. I need you. I need forgiveness, I'm a sinner, I need a God, I need a saviour, I need a king, I need a power outside of self, self will not do it, and I trust you Lord, and I know that you love me because you've proved that your love for me is forever, and I worship you now, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, Amen. Okay, for those of you that are online, we're going to end the connection now. God bless. Reminder, um, Friday, 11 o'clock, if you are able to join with us online or in person, we will be marking Good Friday. And also, if you are able to sing, I'm afraid you will have to do that in person. You can't do that. That's 2 o'clock in Chester. Uh, come and ask us for the details. God bless and see you. God willing at 8 o'clock tonight and um, uh, bye for now.